Hey there, it's me, just doing the video review for the Gizmondo. So let's just get to it. Okay, Gizmondo was um, a handheld console which was supposed to compete alongside the PSP and the DS in the handheld market. Unfortunately, before it could properly get off the ground, um, around six months after its release in early 2005, the company that made it, Tiger Electronics, went bankrupt. And so therefore, they discontinued this and the only place you can get it nowadays is um, on eBay. Um, I don't know if you just look here. It's got a similar kind of look to the PSP in the sense that it's got, um, you know, four fire buttons on the right, D-pad on the left, L and R triggers. Um, along the top here, then you can probably see it's got these five buttons, which in the manual are called piano keys, and these can control options such as volume, brightness of the screen etc. And so along the bottom here, if you look, uh, there's the SD card slot which is where you play your games on. Headphone jack and it even comes with a pair of headphones or earphones, whatever you want to call them. Which is good. A USB connector to connect it to your computer and it comes with a cable for that as well. And the charger and it comes with that as well, which is yeah, very nice. Um, and then on the back, it's got a built-in camera, which it sounds gimmicky, but well, I'll explain that later. Uh, so let's just boot this up. I've got it on standby to help speed things up. All right, now I've got this on the lowest brightening set, brightness setting, um, so I can change the brightness. Um, Alright, so what have you got? It's got. One second. Sorry, it just wasn't working there. Alright, we've got games, movies, music, messaging, GPS, camera, contacts, applications, and settings. Okay, so we'll start off with movies. Now, it comes with this right here, um, a demo card which has a demo for a game, some movies and um, a bit of music but I'm not going to show you these because they're all rubbish so I'm just going to show you some stuff on my own SD so I've actually put some of my own Simpsons episodes on here so I'll show you some of them uh, you can put it on full screen here Um, quality is quite good. So I've got it at about a third volume at the moment. I can turn this up. This is about max. It gets lower and lower. But I prefer to have it around here. So anyway, um, music. Let's just play something. Once again, I can turn the, vo change the volume. The sound coming from the speaker is the quality is quite good. Uh, it never seems to be muffled or doesn't seem like they cut any corners anywhere. But my one major gripe with it is the placement. You can see here the speaker is directly underneath the four fire buttons, and this is the most inconvenient place to put it that I can think. Well, apart from maybe. No, actually, no, it's the most inconvenient. Um, because when you're playing a game, you're mo you're going to have be holding it like this, and therefore your thumb is going to be covering the speaker, which basically just muffles the sound and ruins it completely. Um, and so, if you actually want to hear the sound to a full extent, you kind of have to position your thumb kind of sideways, which is really really annoying, and it's not very comfortable. Mm. Messaging. This can actually send SMS messages to um, phones and other gizmondos. Um, so, you know, let's fill around the keyboard. But the one thing which really annoys me is the keyboard itself. Usually on one of these on-screen keyboards controlled by the D-pad, you'd have, you'd kind of like select your letter, alright, let's just go with J. And then when you select it, it would stay at J. So, for example, if you pressed it twice, it would give you two J's. But if you press it here, it goes back to the center. Now, eventually you'll get used to this. But after a while, after a while, yeah, you get used to it, okay. But for that, 
when you first start it, it will just frustrate you and it will just be really, really annoying. Um, you can also send pictures to other to phones and stuff. GPS, okay. If I just try to connect, you do that. That's because, as I said, the company is bankrupt, so there's no connection anywhere. Um, which is a shame because it would have been quite useful to have GPS on you all the time, so you never lose yourself. You never know. You never feel lost or anything. Um, okay, camera. See there, there's what's behind me. Um, so I can just take a picture of it. You can see a lot of sound. And there we go. You can see there. Maybe if I put the brightness up. See there. And uh, it can't do videos, which is quite annoying. That would have been quite good, but if you go on settings, you can then set that picture as your wallpaper. You can see that. Um, okay, applications. The one app application that I use is the alarm clock, because um, I'm prone to oversleeping, and so to have an alarm clock is extremely useful. Uh, and it works really well. Uh, the sound is extremely irritating, uh, which is exactly what alarm clocks are supposed to be like. Uh, it's also got a calculator, a currency converter. Uh, the currency converter doesn't work very well for the simple reason that it only supports British sterling and um, US dollars, which is really annoying because, you know, with the new euros and coming in and the other countries with other currencies, it's basically not that much use to someone like me, who doesn't go to America that much. I haven't actually been yet. Um, the Bluetooth, um, I figured out, only works. Uh, sorry, I left the brand on. Only actually works with um, mobile phone. No, not with mobile phones. Only with other Gizmondos. And I don't know anyone else who owns a Gizmondo. So that's basically useless to me.